In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how one of our clients went from $60,000 a month to $100,000 a month in less than 26 days without any new funnels, ad spend, and even while working less. And then here is the proof of that amount of money. Now, before we dive in, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tanner Chittister. I'm one of the only entrepreneurs in the entire industry to generate over nine figures from home all by the age of 31. And right here, you can see in 2016, I had $88.20, absolutely balling in my Chase College account. And to date, this was at the end of 2023, right before I turned 32 in January, I had crossed over $100 million in sales, combining different merchant accounts for security purposes. And it's just a lot safer. And that's to prove it. And if you don't believe that, I've gotten every award you can think of to back it up from ClickFunnels. This is the $100 million award where they verify your bank accounts before they send that award. And in a conjunction, I've worked with some of the highest profile clients in the industry, like Tony Robbins, Kevin O'Leary, Grant Cardone, Justin Waller, Neo Davis, Tarek El Mose, Carl Allen, Joshua Crisp, Spectacular Smith, and thousands more that you can see on my site, EliteCEOsReviews.com. Now with that out of the way, let's dive into the problems Katie was having that was keeping her from six figure months. Now, problem number one is Katie had no idea how many calls she was getting a month, how to track those calls more accurately, and how to maximize her time with the best looks on the phone. I'll actually blow this up so you guys can see it. So let's actually blow it up a little bit more. So you can see right here, she had 180 apps, 26 canceled, six no-shows, 63 calls taken, and she didn't even know what happened to the rest. So she had no systems in place. She had no idea what was going on and she didn't know how to fix it. And so what I did, and the first thing was we had to get her to switch from tracking calls manually which contained a lot of air, a lot of air, excuse me, sharing calls automatically. And here's what we did. So step one is since she was already using Slack to communicate with her team, we wanted to leverage that to fix her application issues. So the first thing we told her to do was to create a Slack channel in Slack only for applications like this. And so as we enhance this, you can see right here, this is the one we use. And so you could call it whatever you want, but it is a Slack channel where all day long applications are coming in that the team can see that, look at the answers, look at the questions and know if they should stay on the calendar. Step two is then we showed her how to connect to Zapier so that anytime she got a booked call, her team will be notified with that applicant's information in the Slack channel and better yet, they wouldn't miss anything like they currently were. And this is only a three-step process, but it's gonna save you hundreds of hours of time across the year. It could possibly also make you hundreds of thousands of dollars more. And this is the three-step process. So you set up a webhook, then you will go ahead and connect it with Zapier and what they call time and formatted. And then the third thing is then you're gonna send that information to the Slack channel. So the next step is then make sure to purchase a premium account in Zapier. They won't do this on a free version. You're gonna need a premium version so you can use the webhooks function. Now, once you use the webhook function, it's pretty simple. You're just going to select that. Once you set up the webhook, it's going to take you to a trigger and you can just leave that blank. And then the third step is you're going to test it. And keep in mind, for you to be able to use a webhook, you need to have a call booked first. So meaning they booked a, some applicant or you could do a test, right? Where you book a call from your calendar software or your application software. Application software could be type form, schedule once, whatever. And what we do is we use our internal software called Elite360.io for us and for our clients. And if you want that, you can actually get it here. It's on a seven day free trial. Elite360.io will be in the description and it's in this document. And just so you guys can see this third step, let me blow it up. You'll come in here and you'll test it. And so as I blow this up, you guys can actually see that if you look here, all that information got pulled in correctly. Okay. So that's how that should look. Next is you're going to want to pick how you want the date and time to look as it populates in your Slack channel. So you're going to go to number two and we're going to pick the formatter by Zapier with the date and the time. And then as we go into the action, you're just going to pick the type of format you want. This does not matter at all. It's just how you want it to look for your team. Then you're gonna test if it works. So it's always app and event, action, and then test. Once that's been done, you're gonna connect it to your Slack channel and it's gonna send a message inside the Slack channel. All you're gonna do is choose which account it's gonna be. So most of you will only have one Slack channel. And then after you've done that, you will see the action with all the information. And then finally you will test it and voila, you will now see every single application right inside your team Slack channel, which means you won't miss any of the applications. You can see all the answers and it's easy to see if your team is following up with people, why they canceled, if they kept them on the calendar and see all the answers before the call. It's also great for your sales team because your sales team can go in and see all the answers right there and they don't have to get into a bunch of different softwares and sift through the different candidates or potential prospects that are gonna be on the calendar. Now, you will know if you wanna cancel them 
because they're in the Slack channel, keep them or follow up with them. This is what a submitted application looks like with all the information. And then based on that information, we're either going to cancel them. So if they're not a good look or they don't have finances or they're not ready to move forward and the calendars are full. So in Katie's case, her calendars are really full. If you have a lot of open space on your calendars, you may let more quote unquote bad looks or iffy looks stay. But in her case, she needed to get more people off her calendar because she was taking way too many calls and not having nearly enough people show up. So this keeps us from having massive sales teams that isn't necessary. And you'll find that some business owners think it's fine to just book as many calls as possible, but they forget that they're going to have a, a lot of unhappy sales reps that don't make a lot of money and they're going to have a lot of churn. So the goal is to always keep the business moving, but keep your team happy as well. If you only do what's best for the business and not also what's best for your team members, you're gonna have a lot of churn and a lot of unhappy people inside your business. So if we don't cancel them, the next thing is we're gonna follow up with them via text or in social media DMs if they're iffy. So if they gave any answers, you know, are you willing to move forward today? Uh, it depends, you know, do you have finances available? Um, maybe. We're gonna follow up and get more clarity on that because we don't wanna get them on an hour sales call with our sales team if they're not ready to buy and take up that calendar space. And then finally is if they're a good look, C, we're gonna keep them on the calendar and send them homework videos to watch before the sales calls. And this is what it might look like inside a Slack channel with those answers. And just so you guys can see it, I'll blow it up a little bit. So here, do you have an online offer, right? They said yes. Online fitness, ranging from 1,000 to 10,000. What's the revenue goal you're looking? 50 to 200K months. What's the struggle clients? A lot of clients obviously or prospects have issues with getting leads or sales. What coaching programs have you tried? They put them in here. What's your current monthly revenue? So less than 5K a month. And then they said here, are you ready to move forward? And they put no. So then what that does is usually we've had it set up where we'll automatically cancel. And then we will follow up with that prospect and say, hey, you know, you say you didn't have a lot of funds. You're not ready to move forward. You know, what's the deal? Because if they're not ready, there's no point in putting them on an hour sales call when we have other calls that are ready to buy with our sales team. And that is just a balancing act that you're going to have to learn over time. Okay. So the solution to Katie's problem is now she can see every single application she gets all month without air. And she's going to be able to audit her team's work on follow-ups and cancellations much more efficiently. This will allow her not to miss applications, manage her team more easily, lower her stress, and most importantly, make more money, which is the entire goal of business. So it's a true win-win. Now that was the first problem that we solved. The second problem was Katie was completely maxed out as we already talked about, meaning she had no more time in the day to take sales calls. This could be due to a variety of factors such as poor time management, application issue we just went through or simply that she has no time left on taking any more sales calls, but she's only at $60,000 a month. So you might be asking, you know, Tanner, why is that a problem? I'm glad you guys asked. Let's dive into that. So number one is most good sales reps, they want to make at least $10,000 a month, the best ones, right? And you really don't want bad sales reps because it's really the most important part of your entire business. They make 10% commission on average. And so 10% of $60,000 a month is only $6,000 a month, which is not ideal to find top talent. It's more work to find the wrong person and throw them inside your business than just to wait for the right one. So that's number one. Number two is sales is the most important aspect in a company by far. And this should be the very last thing to outsource because as a CEO, you are going to be the best salesperson. Katie still had time for calls. She just didn't know it yet. And we'll walk you through that. Number three is if you're maxed out on how many sales calls you could take a day, but you're not at $100,000 a month, you're more than likely taking calls that should have been canceled or at the very least followed up with, aka what I was referring to in point number two, meaning that if Katie's not $100,000 a month, but she's booked out on calls for days on end, what that means is she's letting people get on the phone that are never going to buy. And so instead of getting a sales rep, she just needs to cancel more of those calls and fill the calendar up with the ready to buy prospects. And guys, you can do vetting before the call. You don't just do all the vetting on a sales call. You're going to do it before the call. And then number four is Katie had a large following at her disposal. So she get massive influxes of leads each and every month, and she just needed a better way to qualify them. So for context, here is Katie's organic messaging sheet. So you guys can see right here, she had in the month of April, 556 inbound leads. And I just chose April. There was a million months, but I just chose April. And then number two, she had 315 outbound leads, meaning she messaged them. So these are people who messaged her and these are people who she messaged, right? And so out of the 556 conversations that came from inbound, inbound means the lead messaged her first, then an additional 315 leads came from outbound. And outbound means Katie or her team sent an initial message to that lead about her service. So in total, she had 817 conversations for the month 
month around her service. These are only the ones that we know of. There may have been more that she didn't track. And then on average, we want 10% or more of our leads to turn to live sales calls. So in this case, the leads are messages since it's all organic, which just means free and it's not from paid ads. So she had 180 calls booked over 20%. So this is really good, but she only had 63 of them show up, which is really bad, right? That's way more than half that didn't even show up. So keep in mind, marketing is a game of balance, right? You let too many people book calls and you risk inefficiency. You have too big of a team, too much blow. You're not closing enough deals and you're spending a lot of time with people who can't buy. But if you don't let enough people book calls, you risk the business shutting down. And so in her case, because she's well over 10% and she has a lot of people not showing up, she should make it more severe, okay? And you guys can see that because in our conversation right here, you can see she doesn't even know where all these numbers were. So that's why number one was to get all the applications going into Slack. And now number two is she needs to be more aggressive to get these individuals off the calendar or not let them book. Now, this is a massive problem because imagine having 180 hours on your calendar blocked off, but then only 63 of the calls actually happened. So that means over 117 hours of those calls booked never showed up. And it's why Katie can't take any more calls because she's completely booked out. But if they're not showing up, then she's not really being efficient with her time. So Katie doesn't need a sales rep. She just needs to manage her calendar better. And so my advice to her was to make the application more severe so that less people booked and then only the most serious people would stay on the calendar. And it would also be easier for her to weed out the bad looks based on a better application instead of just letting everyone book right now. And that's all she was doing. She's just letting everyone book, not canceling anyone. In the beginning of my businesses, I did that, not understanding about efficiency, not understanding that you don't just want to take as many calls as possible because you have a limited amount of staff and you have a limited amount of energy. So her application, just so you guys can see before she changed it is right here. So I'm not going to read through these questions, but you can pause this video and watch. But the key thing to note here is that when making applications, there's a few rules to keep in mind. The first is you want open ended questions. They're always better. So think of it this way. If you ask someone, do you like apples? They can only say yes or no. But if you ask someone, which type of fruit do you prefer, which is an open ended question, you're going to get all kinds of answers that will give you far more insight into what the person needs and wants. So an example of a good question on her application was, what do you hope to get from this call? That's open ended. So they can't just say yes or no. They have to give an answer you'll be surprised some people will say nothing or they'll say you know I want to lose this or I'm looking for a great coach you'll be shocked at the type of answers you'll get when it's open-ended. And then a bad question she picked was on a scale of one to 10, how important is your health to you? The reason that's a bad question is most humans are gonna pick seven or eight, which really doesn't tell you anything because they're not gonna put a 10 because they don't wanna sound perfect, but they don't wanna put a five or below because that doesn't sound serious. So they put seven or eight and you don't really learn anything because no one's really gonna put a 10. So then what ends up happening is you have to follow up with each and every one of those people instead of saying, how important is it to you to reach your goal? Open-ended, it's blank. So you'll find that by asking open-ended questions, you're gonna get far more insight into where the person is at than by using multiple choice questions, even if it could be a yes or no question, always use open ended ones. Okay, so here's what she shifted to same thing, you guys can pause the video and read through it. But what you're going to see here is every single question is open ended, except the financial one. And the reason she didn't leave that open ended is because she kept getting people who would put a low amount of money. And so what she wanted to do is weed it out and put the lowest amount she's willing to take. And if they're not willing to spend that amount, then it's easy for her to cancel the call because she wants to make it more aggressive. Now, let's say Katie was in the opposite spectrum where she wasn't getting enough calls, then I would tell her to make it less aggressive and not put super invasive questions like if you're working with the coach, uh, how much are you willing to invest? Because that's very invasive. Some people are going to drop off the application, but in her case, we're trying to make it much more severe. And so in this case, it's a lot better. Okay, so problem number three is after we fix getting applications into Slack and now we fix her actual questions on the application, she couldn't handle the volume of DMs she was getting. So remember, Katie is busy taking sales calls. She's coaching clients. She's trying to hire staff. She's starting to run ads. She's coming to coaching and consulting sessions inside her program. She's trying to be a mom. She has dates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she has a, a, a little one. By the way, she just had a little one. So basically, all you ladies can relate. Uh, I can't quite yet, but I was in a family of seven kids, so I do get that. Basically, she needed a way to streamline more of her messaging process. Most business owners are reaching out to every single lead 100% by themselves, and that's great until it's not, right? So yes, some things should be done by humans and have some human element to it, but the more things you can automate inside your business, the better. So what we did is we added a simple keyword to her bio that would automate most of the initial messaging process so that her and her team didn't have to be slaves to the inbox. So in her her bio, here is the keyword. I'll actually go ahead and 
go in and you see DM word coach 24. And that's going to activate a sequence that I'm going to show you in just a second. So once that activates, it sets off an entire sequence. This is the screenshot in my IG DMs testing out what happens when you type in that keyword. So when I went in and typed that in, you could see we have conversations to one of our clients is that it says, Hey girl, hope you're doing great. Thanks so much for reaching out. We'd love to see how we might be able to help you. Do you mind if I ask some quick questions firstly to help you understand your health a little further and what you need? And you can actually add buttons. She doesn't have one in this, but there can actually be buttons with multiple choice that will get the initial conversation started. And you guys are going to see how awesome this is in just a second. So that's just the beginning because what we did is we built out an insanely robust sequence end to end that can take someone through an entire conversation. Now, in her case, she didn't want to do the whole way, but she didn't want that initial part done for two reasons. One, it's faster. The faster you book clients, the more likely they are to buy because their pain is the highest the second they click on ads or they DM you. And then two is she cuts back on labor and staff, which is obviously the goal of the business is to make profit. So the more we can cut back on labor and staff, the more money we're going to make. So does this replace humans? No, it's very hard to replace humans completely, but it is definitely better than leads sitting in your inbox for hours left unread. The longer the leads sit there, the harder it will be to get them to book a call. The sooner they book in, the better. So here is that sequence. So let me actually show this to you guys. So this is set up in our software, Elite 360. Again, this is in the document. It'll be in the description below. You have a seven day free trial. And what we did here, I don't think I can blow up anymore, but these are all keywords at the top. And then what we did is once someone comments that keyword, it'll wait a split second and then shoot out a message. And what that message will do is it says, Hey girl, it'll wait another couple seconds. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for reaching out. This is the second part. And then it will send a third one. We'd love to see how we might be able to help you. Do you mind if I ask you a couple quick questions, you better understand your health a little further and what you need. And the reason we instructed her and why Katie sent those three messages back to back with a little pause is it makes it look more real, right? The big issue in today's industry is people will use bots and it looks like a bot. You want to use bots and automations without it looking that way. And so that is something we instructed her to do. Once they get through to that, they're going to have two options. Either it's going to time out and it will end because they don't reply anything. And then her team will come in. They'll say, yes, go ahead. And then she will ask this question here. So if you guys see this little tree right here, this is default timeout. Yes and no. And then based on the response, it will branch out to a different answer. And then if she says no, it'll say all good wins a better time. And no matter what they pick, her team at this point will come in and start messaging. But what this does is it takes the lead time. So when someone messages, and let's say it takes a couple hours for a human to come in, the second they come in, it will send that. And then once they respond, and her team sees it, they're already off to the races. And so this is going to save 10s, if not hundreds of hours of time, payroll staff expenses. And that's why this stuff gets me so excited because it's these little things that can make massive differences inside a business. So this sequence, like I said, saves hours upon hours of labor and time that would otherwise have to be done to get leads to book calls. And keep in mind, you can make this more robust if you like, but this is what Katie felt would be best to set her setters up for a nice head start. Because remember, you can't control every response. And so sometimes less is more, but you definitely want to use some of it. So when you add together the fact that we automated the calendar bookings, get more accurate data and save time, we edited Katie's application to weed out the best leads from the worst and buy back some of her time so she could take more calls calls or just take better calls, literally spend the same amount of time, but make more money. And then finally, we automate her initial messaging process to save time and cut back expenses on labor. You could say she was somewhat thrilled to do those three things that go from $60,000 a month to $100,000 a month in 26 days. It's not bad, right? It's not bad at all. And by the way, if you want this exact same system that Katie has and need help setting it up, you can book a call by clicking a link here in the description, or you could get this worksheet on the video and book from that. I hope this was helpful for you guys and you enjoy this type of content. If you do, please share it with someone because that lets me know that this is the type of content you want. That's all I got for today and I'll see you guys in the next video.